Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. November 22, 2019, the Netanyahu Indicted Edition. We begin with that story from the New York Times. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was indicted Thursday on charges of bribery, fraud, and breach of trust in a set of long-running corruption cases in Israel. This threw his politi- throws his political future into doubt and heightens the uncertainty and chaos surrounding Israel and its upcoming election. Netanyahu is the longest, who is the longest-serving prime minister in Israel's history, now has the distinction of being the first to be indicted in office. The case involves allegations of giving or offering lucrative official favors to several media tycoons in exchange for favorable coverage or gifts worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. The indictment threatened to open a dangerous new challenge to Israel's democracy as the nation's prosecutor and its prime minister accused each other of subverting the law. So similar to what's going on in the United States right now. Next up. From DW.com, a report that German parliament passes a raft of anti-money laundering laws. Real estate agents, gold merchants, and auction houses will be subject to tighter regulations in the future. Lawmakers complain that the U.S. Embassy and Apple tried to quash a part of the law at the last minute, but this law brings the country in line with EU directives. The reform packet imposes stricter regulations on real estate agents, notaries, metal dealers to prevent money laundering and terror, excuse me, terrorism financing. The law still has to pass the upper house of the parliament, the Bundestag, but it's a good first step by the uh, German uh, authorities. Next up from our friend Dylan Toker over at the Wall Street Journal Risk and Compliance Journal. Uh, He reports that the Justice Department has updated its language in the FCPA corporate enforcement policy, giving minor adjustments to three general areas of uh, the FCPA's um, uh, leniency program or a program for declinations. Uh, In the first part, a company uh, only has to disclose uh, what it knows at the time of the disclosure. So if they disclose Quickly after finding out, they're not expected to have a full grasp of the situation. Second up, a company is um, expected to inform prosecutors um, when it's aware of relevant information um, that the DOJ might not have. A third change requires how the policy applied to FCPA violations found in the course of a merger or acquisition. Also, the ephemeral messaging policy um, is uh, has been slightly tweaked, or rather, it's the first since that tweak back in March. So, uh, some changes to the uh, FCPA corporate enforcement policy that every compliance practitioner needs to be aware of. Wells Fargo continues to shoot itself in the foot as uh, banks may have collected hundreds of millions in extra fees because of confusion over rules on two different types of checking accounts. Uh, House Democrat is calling on Wells Fargo to disclose the size of a potential problem with two of its popular checking accounts that have left many customers confused on how to avoid fees. So once again, Wells Fargo uh, continues to uh, uh, have trouble seemingly uh, getting things right and not overcharging uh, people on their fees going forward. So it's going to be interesting to see if there is uh, anything further uh, from this uh, for Wells Fargo going forward. But uh, at this point, it still appears to be a part of the um, uh, investigation or rather congressional oversight over Wells Fargo that is continuing to move forward. Investigators noted that Wells Fargo has uh, provided incomplete information over a span of multiple years, even though it knew some customers were confused by the policies. The uh, confusion has led to some unexpectedly unexpectedly triggering more fees for uh, customers who may have overdrawn their accounts. Obviously something uh, that the regulators don't want to see going forward. So once again, Wells Fargo is still in the news uh, for not good reasons going forward. Thanks for listening to the Daily Compliance News, a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio.